quick revision video on percentage uncertainty, sometimes called percentage error. So we'll start with the essentials. All measuring apparatus has an associated uncertainty or error. That's normally marked on the apparatus with a plus or minus value. If it's not marked on, then we assume it to be half of the minimum measurement. So an example of that, if you've got a two decimal place balance, and that measures to 0.01 grams, the uncertainty is half of that 0.01 gram, half of a hundredth of a gram, so it's going to be plus or minus 0.005 grams. If we take a single reading in a measurement, so if you take a single temperature, you measure a volume with a pipette or a volumetric flask, then we use this formula. Percentage uncertainty is that plus or minus value divided by what's been measured multiplied by 100. If you take two readings in the measurement, so a temperature change, so you've got a before and after temperature, a titra, an initial and final burette reading, we use this formula. So it's basically the same formula, but we put times two after the plus or minus value. So we need to double the error because the error is in each reading. And then the final thing here, you can lower the percentage uncertainty by using more accurate equipment. So you're essentially lowering this um, numerator value in the formula, or you can use more stuff. So the measured value goes up, the denominator in the fraction goes up and obviously lowers the percentage uncertainty. Okay, so to put all that into practice, there's these five questions you can try. So if you want to pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answer. So for the first one, the percentage uncertainty in the measurement of 25 cm cubed of sodium hydroxide solution using this pipette is going to be, the uncertainty value is 0 0.06 and 25 cm cubed being measured by the pipette, so divided by 25 multiplied by 100 and that comes out at 0.24%. Now the second one is a little bit of a catch in this one because it says for each reading and a titra is based on two readings, your initial burette reading and your final burette reading. So in this calculation we're going to have to double the error. So the way I would set it out is just like before, uncertainty, so 0 0.05 divided by what's being measured 26.3 is being measured. Sometimes students put 50 there because they see a 50 in the information. That's what's being measured by the burette. And we're going to double that because the error is featured in twice in that measurement of 26.3 and then times 100 to put it as a percentage. So that's coming out at 0.38%. Question 3 calculate the percentage uncertainty in a temperature reading so that's just a single reading from the thermometer so that's literally just going to be 0 0.5 over 25 is being measured times 100 which is two percent question four now we've got a temperature change now of 25 degrees c so there'll be two thermometer readings an initial and a final one that's got us the 25 degree change so it could be a calorimetry experiment or something like that. So again, we're going to need to double this error. So it's 0 0.5 divided by 25, but we're doubling this one because there's two readings gone into that 25 times 100. So that's 4%. And then the final question suggests two ways to lower the percentage uncertainty in the measurement of mass. So we haven't had a, um, a balance yet. So if you were measuring mass, well, there's two things you could do. You could lower the uncertainty value. So you would do that by using a more accurate um, balance. So you could use a three decimal place balance instead of a two decimal place balance. And the other thing you can do is if you increase the measured value, you would obviously, if you're dividing the same uncertainty, so you're using the same balance, but you're using more stuff, if you like, you're going to end up with a lower percentage uncertainty. So number two would just be measure a greater mass. 